Hey again guys and welcome back. Uh, I'm in need of a little bit more of a return to regular videos after yesterday's brutal video. If you uh, haven't watched that, go ahead and watch it and um, feel my suffering with me. So here we have another um, motion detection module, but this one here works on microwave length uh, Doppler signals. So it's incredible how much technology. I think this thing was under two dollars, maybe a buck fifty or so Canadian. And it's incredible the amount of technology they're able to cram in such a tiny little package for such a low price. So this will actually detect uh, motion about seven meters away. Seven meters is uh, like twenty-one-ish feet. It's about three feet per meter for you Americans out there. Um, this is a RCWL0516 module and on it is the RCWL9196 chip and a lot of the information that I'm going to be telling you about today is available on this cool website called Electroschematics. No affiliation with them. It's just that um, they had a really good article on this thing and if you'd rather not see it visually and just read through it. The link is in the description below. I recommend you go check it out. So I'll talk about a few things first. Um, first of all, um, creating electromagnetic waves in precise ways is black magic. Uh, any engineer will tell you that, even the ones who make these things. And so it's actually just like printed on the circuit board here. So the generator is actually part of the circuit board. And I believe this way is forward, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, this thing takes a 4 to 28 volt supply, and it is a 3.3 volt device. It even has a 3.3 volt out, which is amazing. And it has these little pads on the back, which you can solder things on to adjust certain features. This thing is fantastic. If you look at the scale here, um, each one of these squares are a centimeter. So it's less than two centimeters by less than four centimeters. So it's tiny. I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder some um, header pins on it. These guys here. And then we're going to try to play with it and see if we can get it working with just literally like the five paragraphs that are present on that electroschematic site linked in the description below. So let's get started. When you solder header pins onto a board, it's always a good idea to stick the header pins into a breadboard. Now this means that you have to be careful not to overheat the pins because you might heat up your plastic breadboard but I just find it stabilizes so much easier and it's uh, it's much simpler to put together. Then I also prop up, you'll see that it's actually sitting, if I tilt it up, see it's sitting at an angle, so I'll usually prop it up with something around the same shape, around the same height, okay? And then you just go carefully and you solder one side at a time so I'll start at one end, do the other end, and then work my way back. So this is a bit far from me, so my vision is not too good at this distance, but should be able to get this done. You guys see it much clearer than me because I don't have a um, monitor I'm looking through. And in fact, the camera, the camera lens is about uh, 20 centimeters closer to the device than my eyes are. On top of that, it's zoomed in a little bit. go and now I can solder the rest and there we go that was relatively harmless I'm going to grab a power supply and get this thing ready for testing so here we go mostly set up um, in the comments on that website linked in the description um, they said not to set this down on the breadboard when you're using it and I think it's because there's metal pins back here which could affect the um, the signal 
So they say to use little uh, jumper pins and put it up from the breadboard a bit. And you know what? Um, that makes a lot of sense because of this uh, black magic stuff that's going on here. So here I have the pins in. I have five of them because it's a five pin device. And in order, the very top is CDS. So CDS is if you have a uh, cadmium sulfide, basically an LDR. If you have a LDR here to check the luminosity level, you can activate it and deactivate it by bringing this high or low. Uh, and so in this case, I'm going to tie it low because that should deactivate it and it is not, um, it, I don't have one in yet. Then we have the voltage in. We are feeding it right now 5 volts from the power supply. We have an output, so I'm going to put that randomly in the breadboard, so that's that white wire there. So that will come up to 3.3 volts um, when it is active, and it'll be pulled down to ground when it is not active. Then we have our ground, just going to pop that into there, that's the gray wire. And then interestingly, there is this blue wire, which gives you access to the 3.3 volt regulator on the module, and it lets you run a light load under 100 milliamps at 3.3 volts on this actual unit. So to see what is going on with the unit, I have this LED here. So this LED will tell us when the device triggers should turn on. It shouldn't be too bright because I have a fairly large resistor on this LED and um, it's pointed directly at you but it's only a 3.3 volt system. And I guess there's only one thing to do is to give it a shot. So again I have never tried this before. You've watched me solder these things so here it goes. It is drawing a milliamp. Look at that. Now I don't know I don't know like if it needs a s sort of some setup time or or what, but it's definitely not like the other, like the PIR. It does not need um, to see body radiation, like infrared radiation. So really, once this thing is going, it should just work. Nothing yet. I have 5 volts coming to my breadboard here. I'll just make sure my connections are good. That has happened before. The connections were not good. Okay, so nothing, nothing as of yet. Let me see if I can give this a few seconds and I'll bring you right back. So there was a problem after all. I am standing extremely still right now. The uh, orange wire, the CDS wire, actually needed to be pulled high to disable the to disable the CDS sensor input. So now it's pulled to the 3.3 volt via the blue wire. I'm still standing extremely still. Look what happens if I move. Boom, that LED lit. So I moved sort of like way over that way. This thing measures roughly 180 degrees. I'm going to try just creep up here behind. Okay, I'm safe here. Well, oh, it need yeah, it needs to go out a bit, I think. So it's about a foot and a half away it needs to be to trigger. I'm going to try to do it from the top here, going around this way, uh, around this way. I'm going to see if I can get to it and trigger it. So I don't know if you can see my hand. Oh, yeah, I triggered it right here. So it has sort of like a, a beam that you have to get used to and you have to get the position done right. But here we go. We have this triggering right now. So we can actually tie this now to something like an Arduino and use this to, to trigger something else. But uh, I think I've got another idea. So I've got here a circuit that's a bit more complex, but not much more complex. So we still have our LED here. I've squished everything up that way. And I have a FQP 
30N06L MOSFET and it's actually getting quite warm here. Um, so what's happening is the 3.3 volt output, not, not the 3.3 volt um, uh, regulated one, but the 3.3 volt triggered output is going onto the gate of this MOSFET. Then I have 12 volts coming from this yellow wire through a fuse going through a 12 volt amber bulb here and then back to the breadboard on this connector here. So it's going to the drain of the MOSFET and then over through the MOSFET and back to ground this green wire here. So we have a 3.3 volt signal controlling a 12 volt bulb. So already we added uh, two components really and this is able to control a much larger load. Now I'm not sure what's going on here because this um, bulb is not grow glowing super bright and I believe that somehow the gate voltage is not high enough even though this should be totally on at 2.5 volts. So if I look here from the top of this diode, so that's the, the this is just a flyback diode because that's an inductive load. If I check from the top of the diode to a ground potential, uh, come on, let me get on there. So sort of from like the drain to a ground. Twelve point three, okay. Now if I check across the bulb here, how much voltage am I getting? So across the bulb I'm only getting right now nothing. Like six volts. Having to trigger this trigger. Yeah, six volts. So I'm dropping six volts in this transistor for some reason. And I'm not really sure why. It should be totally on the, uh, ouch, that is really hot. The, um, the, the, the voltage from the uh, sensor should be well enough. Like it should be like almost a volt more than this thing actually needs to turn on. So I'm not quite sure why it's uh, limiting the current, but either way, what you could do is you can r grab this here to run a transistor, which would feed five volts over to this MOSFET or whatever voltage over to that MOSFET. Some MOSFETs like even more voltage than that. So you could easily do that. But in this case, I just mucked it up real quick. And now you can see that this is completely functional. So if you want me to try to integrate this into an Arduino project, let me know in the comments below. But I think right now, this uh, completely poorly documented Chinesium sensor um, is now completely usable even to complete beginners. Just simply wire up these five wires the way it's shown here. You've got, uh, this should be connected to 3.3. This here will give you your 3.3 and then you have uh, you know, four to 28 volts in ground, and then you have your 3.3 volt output, you're good to go. This thing is only slightly more complex than a PIR in this configuration, but I feel like it could be a lot more useful. So thanks again, guys, for watching.